Hey folks, Joseph A. Savora here, and you're in for a treat because I'm going to be reviewing one of my favorite comedies from Nickelodeon. It's called Good Burger. That's right, Good Burger. With Keenan and Kel teaming up in their very first film together after their TV series All That, which happens to be based on, by the way, based on the All That sketch. And I really enjoyed this movie a lot when I first saw this movie. I went to see it at the Eagle Rock Plaza in, in Eagle Rock, California. Yeah, which was Pacific Feeders at the time. And it was a great film. I really enjoy it. I remember watching this movie many times already, both on VHS tape and DVD, which I have right here. Got this in 2007 for $7.99 at Circuit City. It was a great deal. Yeah. yeah, had a lot of great... Unfortunately, it doesn't have special features um, like some of the Nickelodeon DVDs had at the time. See, and this is what it looks like right here with the CD and right here. Just the scene selections right here, So, just so you know. But I also own, um, I still own the VHS tape of this right here. I just put all these pictures and all the stuff from the movie. Yeah, most of this is from the Nickelodeon magazine, as you can see. And I also own two books for the movie. This movie, yep, and the sequel, Good Burger To Go. <laughs> so they're extremely rare at the time when I bought them. But what's interesting, though, was that Good Burger, the, the book, by the way, that's from the movie, is a whole lot different. Because it had a lot of dialogue that they put into the film, a lot of changes that went into it, and, and it's something that, that looks so different compared to the film that I wish I had put all these scenes in there. You know, especially that one particular deleted scene where and I know you see this in the ads, including the trailer. There was a scene where where Ed, who was played by Kel Mitchell, you know, where he actually meets a customer, you know, a black guy. He just said, basically, he just wants to have a good shake. <laughs> and he just says, really? And he shakes him all the way around like that. Uh, I wanted to see that scene. I mean, that, that has been cut into the film and I was hoping that that was going to be in the movie when I first saw it but sadly it wasn't. Um, also to keep this in mind though before the movie came out it, they started playing this along with a short which happens to be an actual lead now short which has the giant baby and a kiss concert that worked so well when I first saw that Yeah, you can actually find that episode on um, on either Kablam or the Actually Now series, which came out in 2001. Basically just all these recycled skits that aired on Kablam and yeah, mostly. It was really cool. I, I really enjoyed it a, a lot. You know, I never get tired of this movie. I would watch it over and over and I hope that this movie does come out on Blu-ray no matter what because Kenan Thompson and Kill Mitchell has always been one of my favorites of Nickelodeon and all this other stuff that they went on to do. Yeah, I know Keenan Thompson has been best known for the last two sequels of The Mighty Ducks as well as Heavyweights and of course All That. While Kill Mitchell, you know, went on All That, went up doing all this other stuff. He went on later, did a movie called Mystery Man with Ben Stiller, William H. Macy, as well as uh, Janine Galafio and all the rest of the cast. and They also teamed up together in The Avengers of Joaquin Bullwinkle. And then, then after that, Kill Mitchell went on to do other stuff. Like, he did a movie called Gank. And he did a TV show called Dance 360. And, and most recently, he's doing a lot of stand-up comedies um, so far in, in other countries. So it's... 
really cool that you know he's still doing a lot of good stuff you know in his career as well as Keenan Thompson already at Saturday Night Live he's he's still on Saturday Night Live after all these years yeah and I know he had a film called you know Snakes on the Plane you know Fat Fat Albert of course <laughs> yeah and all his other ones that he's been doing so yeah really enjoy them but of course one of my favorite shows uh, after all that was Keenan and Kel, which they both team up with their own sitcom that, that Nickelodeon had that was as hilarious as it can get. It was almost like Lauren Hardy, you know, Albin and Costello and or Penn and Tiller or any other. <laughs> yeah. Great show. So um let's get back to the um original film because I always enjoy Good Burger, so let's get to it. Movie stars, once again, Keenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell with Abe Bogota from the movie The Godfather. He's very good in that film. Also in the cast is Sinbad, yeah, who's been a lot of stuff. Yeah, he's a stand-up comedian, but always been best known for works like you know, First Kid, Jingle All the Way, as well as the TV show A Different World. Yeah. He's been in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Still doing stand-up today, by the way. Also has Cher Jackson from the TV show Militia, the Brandy show. Dan Schneider, you know, always been best known for all that. You know, Keen and Kill and all the rest. Yeah, head of the class, but he also he's also one of the producers and writers. So that's cool. Ron Lester, you know, he was very good in this movie. And later went on to do the film Varsity Blues. Lloyd Beth Denver, yeah, had a cameo in this. Josh Serber, Linda Cardellini, Carmen Electra, Shaquille O'Neal, George Clinton, Robert Brule, and Jan Swiderman, who's been best known for that commercial he did for Supercuts back in 1999. And in fact, I think this was the only film he ever did, but I'm not so sure. I gotta look it up. But he played the villain <laughs> as Kurt, you know, the owner of Mondo Burger. It's written by Dan Schneider with Kevin Coppolo and Heath Schaufer, produced by Mike Tolan and Brian Robbins, and is directed by, once again, Brian Robbins. The movie begins set on the first day of summer. The counter guy named Ed, who's a dim-witted but very charming guy, was played by Kill Mitchell, had one day had a nightmare where he was dreaming about talking good burgers that's floating around. But when he finally got up, he was actually late to work, so he had to get dressed, you know, take a shower while wearing his clothes. Yeah, there was that scene. And he started rolling on his roller braids all the way up to work. <laughs> where he ends up knocking a girl that's on the jump rope. He knock a woman who actually had a baby on her hand. Which <laughs> then went straight to the basketball courts. And yeah, where suddenly the baby starts to, <laughs> to fall right into the hoop. Yeah, that was, that was kind of messed up in that scene. Meanwhile, an angry customer who happens to be a construction worker who was played by Robert Wool was wanted to have his order for good burgers, so he wants two good burgers. But once Ed finally arrived, you know, he said that he couldn't get it, so yes. He finally left the place and he actually said, I can't wait for Mondo Burger to open. And that's when Ed found out that Mondo Burger that's that's right close next door to the to Good Burger is having a big competition. It's already starting to have their grand opening together. So, yeah. So meanwhile, on the same day, a kid named Dexter, who's played by Keenan Thompson, is, is about ready to go to summer vacation. But, but after all of this has happened, Ed was signing up for a delivery with his roller braids. And, and while Dexter was driving with his friend, he wants up spotting Ed in the skate. 
and wound up uh, driving all the way in circles until all of a sudden he hit right on the side where Mr. Reed, who was played by Sinbad, <laughs> had his car being crashed into it, and yes, there was, there was an airbag that shoot all over it. Yeah. Mr. Reed, you know, who has the afro with glasses, you know, got so upset that he offered uh, Dexter to pay enough money to cover for all the damages that he caused, which was a complete accident that started it all. So he winds up having a summer job working at Mondo Burger for a little while until he started making a lot of crack jokes and bawling Kurt and that's what causes him to get fired uh, on his first job. Of course he did start making all these mistakes when he was on there. But when he finally went to Good Burger you know, he started drinking all these shakes. You know, Ed decided to come right in and, and Dexter discovered that he might look a lot familiar to him because he might be the one responsible for the accident that he caused. Well, he finally got his own summer job working at Good Burger, so everything turned out to be a, a whole lot better as it seems. Well, but the only problem is he still needs to come up with more money that he had to pay for, for what he's doing. So once on the night of the grand opening to Mondo Burger, Kurt and his partners came into Good Burger just doing what he's doing best, you know, he mutilated the whole working crew and then he discovered Dexter now working on them saying oh check it boys it's the recheck then Dexter said oh check it Ed, it's the Mondo Idiot oh nice to meet you Mondo Idiot, I'm Ed oh Ed you better watch your butt man okay <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, I, I, I got over that, but it, it was hilarious. Well, after they finally opened Mondo Burger, you know, once he left Good Burger, you know, throwing all these foods around and had one bigger bite. Well, they took off the entire electricity, causes Good Burger to be shut down, and yep, that's how it happened. But then all of a sudden, well, after Ed did accidentally run over. An an LOD owner named Otis, who's played by Abe Pagoda, who wound up having a broken ass, going to the hospital for a little while. You know, Dexter had to took him, and then that's when Dexter's discovered that it really was Ed that, that causes the accident. Well, he didn't want to sit with him all this time until Ed already brought in his secret sauce, which would be the, the better solution to save the company being shut down. Yeah, and that's when the guys from Mondo Burger found out about this. So in order to find out what's in Ed's secret sauce, well, it's best not to give that away, Kurt decided to hire a sexy woman named, named Roxanne, who's played by Carmen Electra, to date with Ed in order to find out what's in the sauce, so that means they can steal the recipe and caused the whole place to go out of business once again. So then the whole trouble started. So Dexter winds up dating with Monique, played by Shark Jackson. Yeah, didn't like him at first until he until they decided maybe they'll they'll go out together along with Ed and Roxanne to a local golf park. So they wound up you know playing some golf while they also ate some um, corn dogs and all this other stuff. Roxanne wants up you know being. <laughs> being hurt, knocked out, kicked, um, all by Ed. <laughs> he quit the job, you know, so that's all, all this just went wrong. Um, earlier in the film, of course, when Ed actually signed up with Ed to team up as partners to, to pay half of the money, that's when uh, Monique found out about this. And, yeah, she got all angry, mad at him for what he did. Yeah, the whole contract that they had signed up for was... It's just so Ed can can end up getting less money than Dexter. So that that was a shame. Yeah, because he gave him thirteen dollars. He wants to buy a yo-yo for for Dexter just to cheer him up and all this other stuff. Well, after all of this, though, they finally went inside Monoburg to only discover that what they put inside the meat. Yeah, and it turns out it's one of those illegal food additives 
known as trapezol that they pour inside the meat and that's what causes all the all the meat patties to become you know huge <laughs> so yeah so after they discovered it they wound up sending them to a mental wart known as Demented Hills. Yeah, so they wound up being stuck in, in there for a little while. Uh, also later on, uh, at night, they also put in some shark poison inside the Ed sauce, which, yeah, there was a huge fight which causes the oldest to be sent the same way that they both got sent, you know, Ed and, and Dexter. So during that day, they finally found a plan to escape from that place, and, and once they escaped, only to find out that that Good Burger was going to be open by 10 o'clock and they had to make it there until it would be too late once all the customers wound up eating the food that's filled with Ed's sauce that's covered with shark poison. So once Ed stopped the lady from eating or taking a bite out of it, well they finally went all the way after once again to Mono Burger just to stop them. Yep. And once they did, yeah, a, a huge disaster had caused all this once Ed accidentally knocked over tons of bottles of Trapasol and it went inside the meat machine and caused the whole thing to explode. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing was rocking and a lot of damage had to be done. And, and after that, Kurt and the rest of them got arrested for what he did. And the whole thing was saved. So now Ed and Dexter had finally saved the day and Good Burger, so now they finally have... Something left to say. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> um, it, it's such a funny movie. I, I really enjoy this film a lot. I could watch this movie anytime. And I hope someday they do come out on Blu-ray. You know, So that way the film will be in widescreen, just like the DVD was. High definition. Maybe this time they might put some more extras into it if they get a chance. Since the DVD was all bare bones. Yeah. Such a shame, but that's okay. Kind of like what they did with heavyweights though. You know, like they'll put more of the, some of the new extras and then, and then maybe add some more of the extras that they forgot to put on the DVDs for that matter. That would be really cool. But the film was so hilarious. Uh, I would watch this any time. There's also another scene in the movie where Mr. Reed, yeah, a lot of accidents has always happened in where Ed and Dexter riding on the Good Burger Mobile, yeah, that was a cool car by the way in the movie, was driving around and wants up running over yeah, Mr. Reed's <laughs> mailbox and, and that's where he says, hey, come out here, come back here, but they did cut out one line in the movie where he says, You're messing with the wrong brother now! Yeah, he, they should never cut that scene. But nevertheless, that, that was hilarious. And yeah, they always keep running over his mailbox many times. And then all of a sudden his car, once again, since he got a new car, the huge burger that's already, <laughs> actually, that came from Mondo Burger, actually went straight down to, <laughs> to his car and then, all, all the, uh, then the car alarm actually went off after that. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> and he says, Why? What have I done? Why? Oh, man. Well, at least Dexter finally paid him back after that, so, yeah. <laughs> a lot of bad things have always happened on Mr. Wheat. Yeah. They had a lot of great cameos. Uh, Lori Beth Denbert as Connie McDoon, you know, got to be in the film. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal in that one scene, and there's also George Clinton as as I mentioned. Yeah, inside the Demented Hills. So. Yeah. Linda Cardellini, of course, played uh, Heather in the movie. Once again, as the patient in Demented Hills, so it was it was really fun. I. You know, there was a lot of great memorable scenes in the film, including including um, <laughs> when both Ed and Dexter were all dressed up as women just to sneak inside the place. And, <laughs> and once they took off uh, one of their dresses, though, 
Ed was wearing. <laughs> Ed was like wearing wearing a woman's lingerie. <laughs> oh God. This movie's just. Oh God. This this just it gets to me a lot too, and all his other ones. And. Oh man, it, it was. I, I just love this movie a lot. Of course, it was a shame that the movie did have some, some negative reviews, you know, from critics. Yeah, although other critics really did enjoy it. You know, some of them did. And I, yeah, I know. But I don't give a crap. I I enjoy this more than any other crappy movie that we've been getting these days, and and it's a lot better than than we respected. It was. It was a cult classic. I mean, for those who love all that, would always enjoy this movie even more. And I know I would too. Also, to keep this in mind, they did have a lot of great locations in this movie and it had a very good soundtrack. There was a soundtrack for the movie, you know, which I wish I had already, if I can find that in stores. Maybe Goodwill might have it too. But they had the song, which also had a music video too, together. Where Kel Mitchell along with Les and Jake, yeah, another band, and yeah, Keenan Thompson joined in to sing the theme song, We're All Dudes. And there was a lot of good songs in that in the movie too that worked pretty well. And they got a lot of, I found some a lot of featurettes too, um, all taken from Nickelodeon that that you can find on YouTube if you get a chance. Yeah, hopefully they'll put some more of that on the film. And, but I also hope that if if there is a chance, maybe there might be a work print somewhere available, so they might be able to have all these deleted scenes that's in the movie. So that would have been cool. And the best of all, though, I'm going to talk about the locations that they shot in this movie at. They did shot this movie in West Covina, California, where, believe it or not, the location for Good Burger was actually a Mexican restaurant called Pizza El Loco. If, if you look at some of the pictures of that place, that's exactly how they filmed the movie. Pretty interesting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And right across to where Pizza El Loco is, which happens to be the, the place where they shot the Mondo Burger building. It's also right next to Blockbuster Video. It was actually a, a shopping center, believe it or not. And it worked pretty well. I, I would have thought that the place that actually shot the movie as a hamburger place will wind up becoming a shopping center. Yeah, it works so well with the facade and everything. Yeah. Great location for that movie. Yeah. Compared to what it looked like on the all that sketch. <laughs> it looked like a just an ordinary different restaurant. You know, between the other. Yeah. You know, maybe someday I might go to that place to see how the movie got shot. So it, it would be interesting. Yeah. Maybe someday. But yeah, I definitely recommend this movie for everybody who loves all that and Keenan and Kel, as well as all the other shows that came afterwards. If you're a big fan of Keenan Thompson and Kill Mitchell, you'll definitely enjoy this movie a lot. I, I sure do because I'm a huge fan of these guys. I hope someday, maybe if I get a chance, maybe I might be able to meet them. You never know. <laughs> but that would be cool. Because <laughs> I really love this movie, and I would watch this movie no matter what. Along with Heavyweights, and all the other Nickelodeon movies, and all these other films that I grew up with. So, <laughs> And yet, <laughs> I'm already hungry just thinking about it, because I would love to have a good burger with Ed's secret sauce included. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So anyway, I give Good Burger a solid five stars. So I'm Joseph A. Saboro, and I'll see you later. Bye. Oh, and <laughs> definitely get a chance to try the burger for yourself.